everyone. So I want to do a video recording of some questions that my sister asked me yesterday in a conversation via mobile phone. And I find them to be very interesting questions because they're metaphysical and parapsychological and questions about Atlantis and Lemuria. So they're very interesting topics and I want to share them with you all. So anyway, um, one of the questions here is how do you close a portal and is there a ritual for sealing it off? And my answer is uh, yes. First, you want to do a cleansing with Sage or Palo Santo. And in order to close the portal, you want to go ahead and hold out your arm with the Sage or Palo Santo. And when you want to spin it around counterclockwise three times. And you want to visualize the protection of a white light shielding around you and dispersing all over your home and throughout. Then you want to go ahead and declare the circle closed. So you do this as a way of projecting your energy by visualizing that white light and purifying your home in that way. If you believe in aura, energy, and chakra, that's what it means. So I just want to also state, too, that this, um, this method, I do this in my circle casting rituals for both like banishments and also for protection um, spell work that's also recorded in my book of shadows and I have been practicing the uh, Wiccan wheel and the Sabbaths and Esbets and spell work for about six years now the first three years was just all study I mean I find that you know if anyone wants to get into a culture or some like basically anything they want if you want to dabble with things that you know that interest you you want to do it out of respect also. For example, Wiccan and, and paganism, Toltec, um, you know, rituals and, you know, spell work. So for me, I took three years of study for studying, you know, the culture of pag paganism and also about where Wiccan came from. And to have a whole lot of respect for paganism and Celtics and Druids and the way their customs are. Because I've learned a lot where things come from and out of respect for that you know it makes me you know more knowledgeable and expand my wisdom for when i do it it means something so that was three years the first three years the next three years three years later i went ahead and did i put it all into practice and start doing you know my own um spell work and rituals based on what i've learned from the wiccan culture and you know their traditions of you know the spell work and ritual so anyway um so t today i'm actually right now i have my own book of shadows and i write my own spells and it's uh it's i've been doing that for like within six years the first three years study three years later i did the the, the actual ritual practice so I think that's very important to understand someone's um, culture and history before you go ahead and get into it. A lot of people go dive in, but they don't know what they're talking about or, you know, they make these claims. But anyway, I just want to add a disclaimer to that part. Anyway, so the next question is, what's your opinion or view for those who do witchcraft as in hexing or putting curses on people? Well, so that question, my answer is, is this. Um, first off, I don't go to that band of magic, the voodoo, the black magic, you know, worshipping Satanism, etc. Um, the person who does these things, I just feel like, you know, they're basically selling their soul to blood demons. Um, because they're very bad, especially if you're sacrificing things and shedding blood for, in a, you know, in, in a ritual. That's just scary. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't, I don't do that, but my opinion of it is that, you know, first off, I wanted to go ahead and uh, throw a disclaimer that before I start doing any sort of like spell, magic, ritual stuff, work, um, thing, <laughs> I had vowed to stay in the light and I also vowed to only 
practice white magic um, because it's less animalistic, it's less barbaric, and there's no blood sacrifice, so there's no harm. Because also in the Wiccan read, you know, they every Wiccan will emphasize that you have to abide by the threefold law. It's the law of attraction. It's what you put out, you get it back. And I don't want anything bad to come back to me. You know, and besides killing animals and things, that's just terrible. I have a heart. I would never freaking sacrifice anything for to, to, to gain power or whatever. So it's it's basically the choice between the road of love and the ro road of power. And for me, I choose the road of love. Okay. Um. Anyway, so my opinion about hexes and curses. Well, hexes and curses to me are just basically bad karma accumulated by someone else interacting with someone else it could be you or it could be them you know it's just the whole transferring of all the bad mojo and the energy now hex and curse can be so many forms you know a simple curse can be the tip of the tongue you can talk so badly about someone and break someone down verbally that's also a curse a hex can be also by action and also by verbal so those are hexes and curses it doesn't really have to be revolved around spell work okay um so all that can accumulate very bad karma and the best example that i can give for hexes and curses and how i've dealt with them was that i've had dealt um this is most recently actually about two three months ago back in may um i had a former friend and former acquaintance just it's one person basically um, they're no longer my friend. I don't consider them my friend because basically, let's just say, good friends don't stab each other in the back and say bad things about you behind your back and disrespect your friendship. Especially after all you do for them, you know, you've been helping and you've been trying to get them to heal, but they just don't want to change. Anyway, so this particular person went ahead and um, she was just like, you know, foul mouthing me behind my back and even in front of my partner. So I found that very disrespectful. And, you know, later on when we had kind of a fallout, um, she went ahead and was just saying, I know she was saying things, let's just say. I found I have my ways to find out, but she was bad mouthing me and saying bad things about me or accusing me of things. And I found out from uh, uh, an, another, uh, basically I found out from uh, another acquaintance who was also connected to her was and w who was also connected to me. And he told me the truth. He told me what she was like. And it was kind of an eye opener. And I was like, I basically allowed someone like this into my life. And you know, I live and I learn, right? So basically, after I found out what was really going on, I found out the bigger picture and there's like two, three, four sides of the story here. I went ahead, you know, forget it. I'm going to go ahead and just focus on me. What I need to do is I need to nip it in the bud. I need to cut the ties because being connected to her was not helping me whatsoever. Um, it's actually breaking me down because every time I'm around her, my energy would just went lower and lower and lower. Basically, it's just a form of dissension, you know. Um, I went ahead and just decided to do a cleansing ritual on myself to basically get rid of any of her curse or her hex. Just plain and simple, her negative energy towards me. And I declared to the cosmos that I've done no wrong to her. All I've done for her was that I've tried to help her. I was there for her. I listened to her. Even through all her BS, I've listened to her. You know, I don't take sides, but I was just, I was there as a friend. I was a good friend. And I tried to help, you know, guide and heal her. You know, me as a spiritual healer, my, you know, as a light worker, our intentions are always wanting to heal and help people. That's just our initial, you know, intentions. You want to see happiness and, and good and abundance in everyone around us. So we tend to allow people to step on us and take advantage of us and not know it until later. But you know, that's just how we are function. When we hit that high, higher consciousness mind, all we have is love. But sometimes, you know, when you when you keep giving and people to keep taking, 
and then you know, you start to realize that that this particular person is all they do is take from me and they take my energy and my power. You have you also have the the birthright to take it back, take your power back, and that's what I did. So what I did was that I went ahead and declared that to the cosmos, and I did a curse and hex reversal so that all the bad and foul mouthing that she's done will go ahead and reverse to her. So she'll go ahead and deal with that karma because it was not my karma to deal with. Basically, all the baggage that she has had nothing to do with me. And I told myself that I'm okay. I am actually happy and content where I am. And I'm going to... I'm not going to let one person spoil it for the rest, for, for everyone else, for all my friends. I will always be loving, I'll always be helping and guiding and healing and continue to be who I am because that was my spiritual calling, my spiritual path. So for her, I had to stop because she was, it's like this, if you want good things to come, if you want good energy to come, you know, the chaos, the BS to stop, the person has to change. Because without change, the person cannot heal and they cannot learn. And that's what I know. So anyway, um, the other thing I noticed too is that when it comes to witchcraft and spell work, a lot of people believed in the whole Hollywood scene thingy. So in today's society, whatever that you watch, Hollywood, Bollywood, Thaiwood, you know, <laughs> um, anything that's fictional dep depiction of witchcraft in movies, my opinion is that they tend to over-exaggerate the actual truth because it's just, just a bunch of misconceptions. So, um, I mean, Harry Potter is totally one of them. But, I mean, it's, like I said, it's fantasy, it's fiction, fiction is entertainment. That's why they're called movies, and that's why it's Hollywood. So, in my experience, like... Um, I've never been possessed. I've, I've never been um, to a point where, you know, I, I see demons and things like that. I've, I've, my only experience if I were possessed or, or if I had any negative encounters was a, a walk-in when I was astral projecting myself for one day. And I had a walk-in and something happened to me to a point where I feel it. I mean, I don't. It, it, I, I'm not walking on walls here, you know, but I feel something was different. That was the only time I've ever felt a possession. And I know many of you out there watch Ghost Adventures. I do too. I'm a huge fan. And I love Zach Baggins because he is actually treading in an area or a topic that we all want to find answers to. And it's not just only an interesting topic, but, but it gives credibility to the, the true psychic mediums out there. You know, the, the, the people who actually deal with energy work. And I want to bring, like, his materials as an, as an example of the backup claim for why sometimes in movies it's um, witchcraft is a misconception and, and, and people's, like, over-exaggerated claims. So, for example, um, Zach, he went to the demon house and he was trying to go ahead and debunk or do a documentary of uh, an article that came out about a boy who was possessed and walked on a wall. And, you know, as much as we want to see proof, like we want to see that child walk on the wall, we obviously can't. But it's a story. It's what was leaked on in the media, and it caught Zach's attention. And was the demon house haunted? Yes, it was. It's, I mean, I personally don't believe in demon demons because I've never seen the devil and the demon himself. Um, and if I ever did, it's in a dream because I watch movies. <laughs> and you put it in your mind. Um, demons are actually kind of man-made. But if you're talking about demons in the spiritual world, you're talking about bad energy, bad spirits. You know, we, we just label them as demons. Um, that's what that's what a lot of people mean. A lot of people who do spiritual work mean when they say demons. Um, so that is one thing. Um, but that's the only thing that I've heard when it comes to actual like possession and demon type stuff. Everywhere in the world, I mean, there's stories in Brazil about demons and possessions. But like I said, I'm not there. I don't know. And I really, and true humility comes from admitting that you don't know. So if you don't see it yourself, if you don't experience yourself, you don't witness it yourself, 
you cannot claim to know. Otherwise, it's just an over-exaggeration, and that can be debunked fast. So another example that I've also watched from Ghost Adventures with、uh, You know Zach Bagans'、um, documentary is that there was an episode of、uh, Queen Mary the <clears throat> excuse me the Vidu pri-、uh, priestess where she did a ritual with Nick and Aaron in New Orleans and、um, you know though she, you don't see it in her video and um you know the video where she did it in the episode you'll see it in aftershocks where she admits that you know she only invited the good spirits but it was Nick who invoked the bad ones so that was on him and the bad ones of course mess with him so basically what I'm saying is that um you know people who do ritual work and spell work like me or energy work um will go ahead and will only invite and welcome Good spirits, not bad ones. That's why we do the circle casting in the ritual to go ahead and block out the bad ones in ritual work. But when it comes to voodoo, my opinion of voodoo is that it's not always bad, because there is Wiccan, which is the Irish pagan druid and Celtic in Europe. That's they have both white magic and black magic, but that's that part of the world. That's also witchcraft. Voodoo is another form of witchcraft, but that's in Africa. You know that also has black magic and white magic. Voodoo is kind of like the epic center of both between, and then there's hoodoo. Hoodoo is more the healing, the the healing part of voodoo. But、um, basically, it's the same thing. It's just two different worlds practicing the same things. They're but you know it's just two different. I think two different、um, genres too because the whole ritual is. Completely different, but every culture has their ways. Let's just say. So I've never met anyone who did voodoo. <laughs>、um, and if I do, like I said, I will approach it with respect. You know, I'm not gonna go ahead and bash it. I'm not gonna label and think, oh, it's bad. You know, you know, you can't really judge something without really fully understanding something. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, so that's my my complete answer to the one question、um, to throw it out there. Anyway, the the sec this、uh, third question is actually kind of referring back to the first question of the how do you close the portal and there's a ritual for sealing it off.、Uh, this question is so will that permanent permanent、uh, permanently close the portal or will it need to be repeated at some point? Ooh, that one's an interesting question. So,、um, so my my um. Take on that, or my experience in that is that、uh, it's like two, th- three different takes. So unfortunately, portals cannot be permanently closed,、um, especially the places、um, haunted. They cannot. But a place that is like like semi haunted,、um, you know, it it can be closed. So, and the third type is that if it's like if it's a type of、uh, A place where someone does a séance or some paranormal like activity type kind of thing, where they use spirit mediums to open a portal that was never opened in the first place, and there was no activity in the house at all in the beginning. That's a third type. So the first type is if it's haunted, and you're asking if the portal can be closed permanently. No, we cannot because spirits also have energy. There's,、um, you know, so they're gonna constantly go in and out. And you can't prevent spirits from coming in and out.、Um, that's one, but that has to be really huge. That's most of what you see in ghost adventures. Those places have a lot of activity. So if you're like a high priestess coming in trying to close a portal, it's not going to get closed.、Um, it's probably going to anger the spirits even more. I, that's that's just what I have to say about that one.、Um, The second one is like if、uh, let's say if a home is haunted by one or two spirits, you know it's a minimal haunting, and you want to go ahead and close a portal or be- or you know prevent them from coming through, which is kind of impossible. What a high priestess could probably do is banish them, but they would be really angry. And here is where you have to learn to coexist within spirits, like I have, because my old apartment used to be haunted. 
I think it still is. And even my apartment that I'm in now is semi-haunted. But it's not haunted bad. It's it has it's because of me. It's because I do energy work and the reason why we do the opening and closing casting and rituals and to protect ourselves is to prevent any psychic attacks from happening. So spirits will always be attracted to people who will do who, who do energy work. It's just the the way the law is. It's spirit attraction and the law of attraction and energy attraction. So that's what it is. So when you banish spirits, um, be very careful because if you don't understand the spirit and know why they're there, um, and you and you have ask a high priest just to banish them, like from the home, the farthest that they can be banished from is maybe by the foot of the door. But they'll be very angry. And they'll follow the hell out of you. They'll attach to you and they will taunt you until you understand. So um, I've never had an experience in that, but I've heard stories from friends who did. And I warn them against banishing spirits unless it's really bad. Um, I would consult a high priestess to find some sort of resolution. Um, but other than that, I've never really, I've never really had friends who've actually had like hauntings to the extreme you know so yeah um the last part like i said is some more i think for my sister because i don't think the the home that she lives in is haunted um and i doubt any of my in-laws would ever do like a seance or ouija board ritual to open a portal um so this question is basically i think out of Fear because I know my sister's afraid of seeing spirits and she wa- she wonders if she ever see one, how would she s- stop it? You can't really stop a spirit from coming through. That's just how the other side works, <laughs> I think. Um, basically, my thing is that you have to admit that you don't know. That's what I'm trying to say. I just don't know. But you can't really prevent a spirit from coming in and out. It's, their, it's the way it is. It's the way it is. Um... But if you are in a home where there's no activity, and after the activity, like if you do a seance or a Ouija board ritual, and you find that you know there's more activity than it was before, and there was never any activity before, that's because you guys used your energy and you became psychic mediums. Even though you don't know, you don't have to be psychic, or you don't have to have a God-given gift or power of you know psychic power or whatever to do it It is just the psyche you're 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 giving in to when it comes to the seance the ouija board you're giving in your energy to it focusing on it and then therefore spirits get attracted to it and they come through and you and them open up a portal into that home there from there you can expect some sort of activity some sort of spirit attachment that whatever they came through so in order for that to be closed, the person who's doing the Ouija, the seance, needs to properly close the portal before they end that ritual. It's still a ritual. It's a form of ritual. So, you know, that's why it's important when it comes to ritual work in Wicca or any ritual, even in the Toltics. There is an opening and closing of the portal to make sure that nothing, you know, ungodly comes through, you know. Uh, so that is that. Um, particular answer to that question Um, and basically when you close the portal the only way it can be reopened is if someone does a conjuring activity to reopen a portal that was very close and you need to understand that when you partake in these activities it's very dangerous because you not just open you just don't open one portal it can be multiple portals so there you go okay so this this question um this question has to do with the um it's like good and evil so this question is so those who sold their souls to blood demons um why would one choose to do that in the first place and what do they get out of it like you know people who um Basically, the question is, people usually do stuff out of gain. What is it that they're they're gaining, and and um, basically, what why would they do it? Okay, so that's the question. So my answer is obvious. Um, I think every light worker knows this. 
um, people who do rituals and sell their souls to blood demons, um, they do it to gain power, like spiritual power. And it's a very half-assed way of gaining spiritual power. Um, and with that, it comes no wisdom. So that's the danger in it. Um, so, you know, as for me, before I, be I began doing any ritual work, I went through like a course. This is goes back to me studying within the six years to so three years was all study. So within the three years of my study, I had to take like a huge like spiritual test. And during my trainings as a, you know, as a Totuk Nagual in Sedona in Arizona and also in studying Wiccan, I had to make a choice between love and power. And I really had to do self-reflections and, you know, I already know who I am. I know my heart. I know my mind. I know my soul. And I had to choose. And like I said, I stated before that I chose the path of love instead of power. And here is why. Those who are power seekers are be willing enough to sell their soul to the blood demon for spiritual power. And they usually end up lowering themselves into a dissension you know, it's a dissension when you do that. You don't ascend. You don't gain wisdom. Um, the opposite of gaining wisdom, ascension, is dissension. So you lower yourself to what the Toltecs called the band of the beast. Um, so when you do that, basically there is what's involved is blood sacrificing of animals. Um, and, of course, there's no wisdom at all. All you know is destruction, chaos, and it all comes from an ego-based, you know, perspective to feel powerful. They want magical information and resources from others only to suck it up for their own personal gain, whatever it may be, which is power, basically. That's the main one. Okay, so what's the opposite of that stuff? Well, uh, people like me. Um, light workers, seers, uh, you know, we choose the path of love because it's all about selfishness, not selfishness, selfishness, not being selfish. Um, so basically, I choose to expand my awareness and become a perception seeker. It's the love for all things, the respect for all things. It's about doing the right things. Healing others, helping others, gaining uh, spiritual growth, and also gaining allies. Um, it's the law of, I give, therefore I shall receive. And the choosing to abide by law of attraction and, you know, staying within the light. Basically choosing God. Okay, so during my training and the spiritual test, I was, at, I was asked, would I ever kill a dove just to do black magic? Uh, basically a black magic ritual that will get me rich. Um, I was like, first of all, a dove are the most sacred things in like life right now. And I've studied um, about the dove. And I have have friends who are in the, it are, you know, a part of uh, an order called the Sacred Order of the White Dove. And we studied about the dove and its meanings. And I was like, no way. I would never succumb to that. I would never. Because I have a heart. So that is the difference between um, people who do black magic. They are basically power seekers. And people who do white magic, they're perception seekers. You have the light and the dark. You have the good and the evil. So choose carefully if you ever do any type of ritual work or the road um because there will be some repercussions to that anyway now most of the rest of the questions is just about atlantis and lemuria and i think i'm gonna save this for another audio because that is a topic all on its own and it's stuff that it's already out there it's in sakurai ascension it's in you know james tiburon it's in graham hancock it's you know so I'll go ahead and end this recording, and I hope that you enjoyed the session. It's um, 
basically it's just a metaphysical, parapsychological, paranormal type of questions. And I like those questions because they tend to challenge me on a spiritual level. And I, I like I said, I put things to practice, energy work. So I only share what I do experience and what I know because um, the rest of it is unknown. And that's it for now. Have a good day, guys.